so I'm out. It's Monday morning, it's about 12. I'm meeting Alex here. Sam has just dropped me off. I still feel crap, but um, Alex thought it would do me good to get out of the house for an hour. So I'm here. I have no idea what I'm gonna eat. I don't really have an appetite. But I'm out. <laughs> So I've got a corn wrap with, looks like it's got salad in and Alex has got chicken balls and barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken panini with no barbecue. <laughs> so barbecue chicken panini without the barbecue. It's just chicken bacon and cheese in a pit. Okay. <laughs> so it's time for dinner. It's, uh, what time is it? Half past four, I haven't been doing a whole lot this afternoon after I got back from Pontefract. I've had the cold shivers. I've been trying to make a planter. I've got a circle, that's literally it. So Simon's made the most amazing looking dinner. Let me show you what we've got. So Liz has got lamb, giant Yorkshire pudding, roast potatoes, mash, broccoli and peas. And roast taties. Oh, and some roast taties under there as well. Uh, Simon's got the same, he's got the whole Yorkshire pudding. Uh, and I've got broccoli, peas, mash, roasts, mince, and it's not real mince, and half a Yorkshire pudding. I don't know if I'm going to get through all that, you know. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> a heck of a lot of food. And that's the, uh, that's as far as I've got with my planter. <laughs> Oh, hello. It is 10 to 1 on Tuesday. I'm not doing very well. Um, yesterday, I was able to get out and meet Alex for lunch. But unfortunately, as soon as I got back, I just went downhill again. Uh, I was having cold shivers, just hurt all over. So I ended up having to sort of sign out from the rest of the day. I was a wee bit concerned at that point. I was thinking, well... Is there more to this? Do I need to phone the hospital? Do I need to find what's going off? Um, but yeah, I think it's just the cold moving to my chest because now I've got a cough. Um, I'm still a little bit hot and cold, but I figured that would be happening anyway if I've got a cold. So yesterday was quite the struggle. My head's not very clear. So planning anything, organising anything just seems to be an issue. Liz is in the shop for me. Simon's gone off to do some jobs. Um, like post run and stuff like that uh, I've had quite a few sales online over the weekend which Liz is going to bring back tonight which will package up and get posted tomorrow but um, I'm not doing so good I just feel exhausted my whole body hurts everything hurts although I did change to my next Invisalign so this is Invisalign number 2 set so that happened today with it being Tuesday my next Invisalign appointment is Thursday next week and that one includes another set but also these little sort of things on my teeth for it to click onto. I think they're like little, it's hard to explain them but the little attachments that help the uh, Invisalign attach to them. So that's happening next Thursday. Um, I'm supposed to be going back to work on Thursday to the shop, but at this moment in time, I don't think that's happening. Um, the recovery is a lot slower than I thought it would be. And I think the cold, the flu has not helped. It's really slowed me down. So today's going to be another day of pottering about and not doing very... When I say pottering, it basically means very little. I just pot it and do things that I feel I can achieve. Um, yeah, that, that's literally all I've got on my list for today. <sighs> yeah, yesterday was a tough one. I was very emotional yesterday morning. I think I'd had enough at that point. I was like, right, can I just get better now? <laughs> it got too much, but I think I'm back on the up now. I do feel a little bit clearer headed I wouldn't say it's that clear but it's slightly better I just hurt all over everything hurts <sighs> a 
Okay, so it's Wednesday morning. It's about 10 o'clock. Um, I've not vlogged or filmed very much, as you probably noticed, because I've not been very well. Um, struggling an awful lot. Uh, just no energy, just gone, cold shivers. Uh, anyway, so I rang the rhythm team yesterday uh, and I'm on my way to Leeds Clinic so they can take a blood test to check that I don't have an infection. It could just be the flu, but they're concerned that there might be an infection. So we got to go and do that. So we're on our way to Leeds now. Uh, I've got psoriasis on my hands. When I get an infection, <laughs> I know this, uh, a virus or something really, you know, bad, I end up with psoriasis, itchy hands, which is what I've got. And yeah, that's a telltale sign something's not right. So, fingers crossed there is no infection that's bad. Uh, but we're off, we're off to Leeds. I just want to get on, you know, I want to get on with life, but at the moment it's just still no man's land and trying to get better. Shiny lights and purple sky, everything's so bright. Kitari wa sachigami. I'm home again, uh, yeah, we're now waiting for blood test results as to see whether I do have an infection. The guy there said, don't think so, because it all looks fine, feels fine, don't feel any, you know, infection. I'm like, okay, but whether you feel it or not is a totally different thing, because there's new wires that run all the way down, so, you know, there's still potential. Um, and I don't want endocarditis again, I've been there, I've, we've done it, I've done that. When you have endocarditis, which is a heart infection, this would be uh, endocarditis caused from a uh, pacemaker. Um, it's three months of antibiotics in hospital. So we're trying to cross everything right now, fingers crossed, everything crossed, that that's not what it is. And it's just a really bad cold that's completely flawed me, that's given me absolutely no energy, that's given me cold shivers, hot sweats, all of the other symptoms that endocarditis gave me. So we're crossing everything that that's not the case. Uh, so as you can see, I'm back upstairs now. I've just We've been in for a little while. Sam was made me a sandwich. Simon has made me a sandwich. So I've had a cheese sandwich. Uh, I've got a cup of tea, taken me Invisalign out, give me teeth a break. Uh, but it's feel, it really feels like it's working. And I might do a bit of crochet. But to try and get my brain switched on because I've been so fuzzy and unwell just not had any focus just none so I want to try and achieve something even if it's just finishing one of the crochet items um so yeah I don't I'm just again it's groundhog day I'm just waiting now they said it'll be Friday probably when I get the results of the blood test uh and then we'll go from there so fingers crossed for me that I don't have an infection somewhere uh, and I'm just going to recover as normal anyway without having to go into hospital and all that again. So I thought I'd show you what I'm working on right now since again I'm stuck in no man's land waiting for results and different things. Um, I've got a little bit more energy as I'm able to sit up and do stuff because uh, I have been sort of floored that much where I've just had to sit and either watch rubbish on the television. I can't talk rubbish in the television or sleep that's literally all i've been able to do but i'm up i'm up i'm staying sat down now now um so i am working on a granny square blanket now it's basically one giant granny square you start in the middle and then you change colors as you wish and expand out as i've said in the previous video if you want me to do any crochet tutorials I really don't mind 
Um, it's definitely not going to be a crochet channel, but I just know that, you know, I'm a bit crafty and people like to know what I'm working on. Uh, so yeah, I'm currently working on this one. This one's for David. This is a customer order. And because he wants it rainbows, which it currently still is, uh, red, yellow and pink and green, that's kind of the sequence of it. Uh, it starts almost like baby colours and then it gets to a sort of 70s vibe. Uh, so we're at, we're definitely on the 70s colour vibe here. Um, and it's going to be 41 inches by 41, approximately. I've still got a little way to go. Uh, and it's made up of um, what the Americans call double crochets. Um, in the UK, I think we call it triple. But essentially, we're doing three sets of double crochets um, to make each uh, stitch. So as I'm doing it now, I will just finish that one. You can see this is the stitch that I'm doing. So there's one, two, three each time with a one in the middle and another three. And keep working my way around. Uh, I've actually got a video on beside me as well. Uh, this one is a Scrap Yarn Stash Buster Projects Episode 1 Sweaters. It's a YouTube channel and she's basically showing people what she's doing with her stash. So she's making a granny square sweater. So she's basically getting all the small pieces of wool. The last bits of yarn she's got, making lots and lots of squares to then make a sweater out of it. Which is great, it's a good way of using up all of your wool. Uh, especially since I've now got this, which is a blocking square. So I'll show you how it works. Where are my pins? You get your pins, right, you put your pins in. So I have got my board, you put your pins in and then you put your granny square in it. And what you can do is spray it with water uh, and then leave it in there to settle so you get the perfect shaped granny square. It helps it, um, basically relaxes the wool a little bit. I've got a whole bunch of granny squares up there that I've already made. And then you just layer them up. Now I don't think that's the right size, but this is, a, um, this is my first guess of that granny square. But that's basically how it works. Plus it has this little stand at the bottom. So you can stand it up like that and you put your granny squares on so they can dry out uh, and be the size that you, you know, so they all match. So when you do put the item together, you've got the perfect size granny squares. That's the idea. Um, so there we are. Uh, and I'm still loving this, by the way. It's a genius purchase. And in my last video, I said magnified. I meant magnetized, not magnified. It's a great, a great thing. So what I also thought I might do is do a video on the items you really need to get started with crochet. So, you know, what the basic accessories are. And then uh, let you know which ones I think were actually any good and not any good, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in any of that, do let me know. So I'm going to continue with this and see what else she's making on here. So I need a bit of a break for this one. I'm back on red again to go back round red and so on. I'm about 10 inches away from completing this one. So I've got quite a bit more to do. But you get to a point where you're like, well, I need a break or I need to do something else. So I've got a stitch marker and I'm going to put it in this last stitch here uh, and sort of loop it in. So I know where I'm at. So while I'm leaving said project, it's not going to run away with me and I'll have to come back to it. So yeah, I've put a stitch marker in it now uh, so that I can come back to it afterwards. Uh, this is the size of it so far, as you can see. We're nearly there, but I'm about 10 inches away. So what I'm going to do now is grab the hexagon cardigan that I've been working on. I'm going to make the neckline smaller because I made it way too big. So I'm going to basically tighten up at the top, add some extra stitches in there. Uh, and then I'm working on extending the arms out uh, and putting a ribbed uh, end on them. Now, at the moment, they're not long enough. And I've never done a tapered arm before. So that's what I'm going to work on. Oh, don't lift your arm, don't lift your arm, dodging it. Just got to keep remembering, don't lift the arm. So at the moment, it's too wide at the neck. 
so I need to make it slightly smaller. Liz reckoned another three holes would be spot on, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to work on tapering the arms, which I've never done before. So to do it, I'm going to have to turn it inside out. I'm just going to do this arm first. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Uh, stitch them together a little bit further so the head holes are not quite so massive. I like to give it a tug every so often to make sure that I'm not making it too tight. So a bit more, we've got one, two, three, so a little bit further along to go. I'm going through the inner uh, top of the stitches and then I'm going through both top stitches the other way. I just find it makes for a nice flat join rather than it having this bump. It kind of gives it a flatter effect. The tricky bit is to try and make sure you're lined up as you're going along. I like to add lots of knots at the end to make sure it's completely secure. Let's check out the other side, trim off my ends. Because it's on the inside of the cardigan, they're not going to really show all that much. So that's my neckline done and adjusted, so it's not as wide now. Now I need to organise the tapering of the arms. Never done this before, so we're going to learn. Now I'm assuming we do less, <laughs> make it smaller in some way, so I'm going to figure it out. So it turns out it's actually quite straightforward. With the granny squares, because I'm doing granny squares, granny stitch, because I'm doing it sets of three, Every so often what you can do is you do two instead of the triple and you sort of dot them in all the way, the, the way around every so many uh, rows to eventually make it smaller. So I think this is going to be quite straightforward. So I am just tapering my ends and I've learned how to make it uh, smaller. Let me show you. There we go. So it's now got... A sort of balloon cuff if you like I'm very pleased with that so tapered with the cuff on the end so I'm just going to do the other one but my dinner's ready so we're off downstairs Ooh. my tea was lovely I very much enjoyed it just coming back up the stairs I'm going to finish off my cardigan and uh, before that, brush my teeth yet again and put my Invisalign back in. Oh, so it's now 5.36 and I'm finishing off my sleeve since I've now learnt how to do these. Then it's a final decision on whether I'm going to have buttons at the front of the cardigan or not. Um, but I'm going to sign off from today's vlog so I can get it edited ready for tonight. Uh, thank you so much for watching uh, and please get involved in the comments at the bottom. Let me know anything or I'll just, you know, have a quick chit chat. And uh, next week I will be doing my live chat as the vlog goes out on a Sunday. Normally I try and do it every other week, but as you can tell, it's all a bit odd at the moment. But I do aim to do a bit of a live chat with this Sunday's vlog. So in the next one, uh, feel free to hang around um, and have a bit of a live chat with me. Uh, so thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next. Bye, loves. Shiny lights and purple sky, everything's so bright. Kitari wa sachi gamiya. Turn off your phone and off your mind. Look at you so bright. Mom, chisu wa sachi gamiya.
Oh, I'll take you to 